This is for the nerds, this is for the brainiacs, this is what we deserve. Go ahead and play it back, you ain't gonna touch me, you not gonna do nothing, you are not above me, I bet you wish you was me, I know it, I know. What's up everybody, welcome back to another Monday edition of the Only Friends podcast. We got a pop in this weekend. Everybody got into a little bit of something, something. Myself and the tortoise, we were living our best we life. We did. We were. were. I'm, I'm going to need a week to recover. We got anything going on this week? Nothing going on, right? Nah, no, no big deal. Just four days of, uh, of a ne- never-ending academy. You know, eight yeah. hours, ten hours a day, whatever. I'll pull it together. I figured out my schedule for the next four days, uh, beginning tomorrow. And I will be up at 7 a.m. And I won't leave the office until 10 p.m. Yeah, no, same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so just to get this out of, out of the way up front, uh, the time for the podcast is going to change this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we are going to be doing it live at 8 PM as opposed to the normal noon time that we usually do. Um, Friday, we're actually going to be off reason being is that Friday would actually mark our hundredth episode and we have something very special planned. So we're going to push that to Monday so that Andre could be here and join us for, uh, our Centennial birthday? That's right. Yeah. Centennial. Wow. We did it. Almost. Uh, bro. We're on pace to do I, it. I'm going to say it again, man. We're almost 100. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost, damn. Time, man. You know, it's crazy. We're doing some late night podding this week. A huh? little late. Yeah. We yeah. might have a little pod after. Uh, you know, we got Jeff pod Platt. After dark. We got Jeff Platt coming in on Wednesday. Oh, I think man. shit might get a little spicy oh, now that, one, that we're that in the evening time. Yep. Wow. Late night Jeff Platt. Mm-hmm. And all this darkness on the set will make a lot more sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I know. Um, I need to recover from this weekend. Not because I drank too much. Not no. because I had too much fun. I drank enough for both of us. This, this is true. <laughs> uh, I did enjoy the trip. I missed everybody. I enjoyed their company. Um, but, you know, you guys are all fucking old. No, you're, you were all old. No, no. Do not put, do not put that you, evil on you, me, Grandma. You were in there. You're in the group. Look, I understand age-wise that, you know, uh, as far as numbers go, we're all in the same boat. Jesus Christ is our group of friends old. Yeah, we are old. Old, it's like, man. When, you, when you're, like, comparing, like, hey, how many milligrams of cholesterol medicine do you take? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know. Right? Like, they're also, like, antiquated in their knowledge. It sounds like I'm talking to Paul Shoddy again about, like, the world. <laughs> they're like, yeah, if you get, like, you know, $100,000 and you put it in a low-interest bearing interest oh, man. In, in savings Save account, account uh, you'll be able to live off that for the rest of your life. I'm like, yeah. It's 2022. Yeah. Are you out of your goddamn mind? Yeah. You're just like, I just sold my house to play an $800,000 heads up match. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I was literally like, look, I have a million dollars liquid that I just received from selling this house. All right, Berkey sold the house. Hey, Berkey. We really, Congrats, listen, man. listen, listen. We, we didn't really win anything. You know, he we won. needed to win. Berkey no, won. Like, this, this counts as a win. Yeah, I now when you sell your house at the top, I think you won. Now instead of having buy it back next year for half the price. Yeah, now instead of having all of my money in assets, I only have half of my money in assets. (laughs) That's right. So that's great. How good Uh, does liquidity feel? It it feels nice. (laughs) Now you just have no idea what to do with it. Cash is king. I'm just gonna you know bury it in my backyard as I should. (laughs) There you go. Um, No, that's that's antiquated. Sure. (laughs) That that like the mattress thing Mm -hmm. antiquated. But like I'm explaining to them. I'm trying to explain to them like, look, I have. I have probably more liquidity than this entire group put together, and I'm terrified that I will be broke in 12 months. Right. <laughs> like, do you know how scary of a place the world is right now? It sounds uh, like you need some of those low fine. interest bond things. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like you all have children and wives and families and lives to worry about. Like, why aren't you scared? Yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> Man, they got a steady income coming in. They got a 401k. They don't that's care. that's true. Uh, yeah. There also was this belief that thirty thousand dollars was enough to get by. It's because a we're, we're which just is gamblers. actually the poverty line. <laughs> yeah, we're just we're just like a gambler, you know. Like you always feel like money's sort of on the line, or well, it is. Or... The first thing I did whenever I found out my household was put out a tweet saying, "I want fucking Helmut." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bring, Helmut. bring this stinky, stinky man to my to my clutches. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I I got usurped. I, I did got, not. Uh... I did not win the battle. We'll talk about that a little bit down the line. Uh, what I do need to recover from, though, is this piss-poor attempt at a front flip off of the low dive. Mm. Now, 
in you, my defense, you went a little. little I haven't far. been on a diving board in about 25 years. That's not a very high diving board. Well, it doesn't matter. That's high. I could have. I could do a front flip off of standing ground. That's that, not that the problem. He cut oh. it off right before your face smacked the He did water. cut it off. <laughs> he, he cut it off gracefully, but he didn't need to because I'm going to talk about it. I hit my balls <laughs> so hard on the water. I like how there's a soundtrack to this. Like, so, uh, well, it's the oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, yeah. Oh. And I queued it up right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, it looks like it might be, you know, a little chest taking the worst of it, maybe a little fate. No. Nah. No, no. I led. All nuts there. Mm. And, you know, for the men in the audience, you guys understand how it goes. The the immediacy of pain isn't there, right? You right. smack your nuts and you're just like, ah, I'm good. I'm going to walk this off. And then by the time you get to the dock, it hits you. And you're right like, your I am in <laughs> writhing pain right now. Right. <laughs> it kind of takes a, a couple seconds for it to kick in. Yeah, it's like three or four deep breaths before you're just like, oh, God. I can I, feel it, man. Stop. I'm going to yeah, vomit. Adrenaline is fucking sick. <laughs> like, What's oh, that? Man. Adrenaline is sick. Yeah, I, that's true, too. I once broke my toe. Had, I was playing soccer. Had no idea for two and a half hours later. Started feeling the pain. Went to the uh, hospital and the doctor's like, you actually broke your toe. And people don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, this, happened, this happened to me when I was playing flag football when I was a kid, like on six or seven. Um, I got my thumb jammed in somebody's flag when I tried to pull it. And I played the rest of the game with this fucked up thumb. And then after the game, my thumb is just blue and purple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, why did you not leave the game? I was like, I don't know. I wanted to play football. What yeah, do you I mean? Didn't feel it. Yeah, what, do you, no. what do you mean leave the game? It's it is crazy. that feeling, right? When you like you you jam your finger or you stub your toe, and you just, there's like a split second where like, how bad is this gonna be? I'm kind of. You I'm, feel nothing. You're like, how oh, bad? This is gonna be bad. I'm kind of weird because like when in. that happens sometimes, and I kind of I kind of like it. Like You're I don't an idiot. I don't try to like stub my toe <laughs> on things, of course. But if I do, and I feel like this ooh, fucking like, guy likes stubbing his toe, I'm like, yeah. oh, like. This feels kind of stingly, but I kind of like that. You're here for the pain. Yeah, like yesterday, a little bit, a little bit much. But one of my nails on my 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 fingers or my toes, doesn't have to talk about it, uh, was <laughs> kind of coming off. So I just ripped it off, and then I put like the liquid bandage over it, and like it stung a fucking lot. <laughs> but I was, oh, I liked it. I was like, oh, I was like, well, I'm gonna fix it now. You're a glutton <laughs> for pain. Yeah. There's it's something so wrong with you for sure. Yeah, uh, I'm insane. Dude. Speaking of pain, <laughs> shout out to Jamin. Thank you so much for filling in with the uh, peas and carrots on your balls, mm -hmm. which are healing up from a vasectomy. <laughs> you did this seat great, Jamin. Yeah, really, really appreciate you stepping in in a moment of need when you aren't exactly 100% being a gamer yeah. and uh, working it through the pod. I wish you guys would have been on time. I was really enjoying the podcast, which got cut abruptly short. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think it was the shortest one. It on, was. On We've never done less than an hour. I assume. I can only assume that you guys were an hour late because Melissa was doing her makeup. Uh, <laughs> that that tends to be the theme. If you guys, if you guys want to know why we were on time today, uh, shout out to Melissa doing uh, commentary for Party Poker right now. Good job, Melissa. She she was not here to slow us down <laughs> nope. uh, by you know waking up three minutes before the podcast starts and then needing forty five <laughs> to put on her face. Oh man, have we have we already talked about like the one time you we like. Can you go wake Melissa up? And I'm just like, <laughs> I don't think we talked about this. There right? was an early episode, like one of the first 10 or 15, where oh uh, just Landon was home. And Melissa has a tendency to either not set an alarm or just sleep right through it. And we had a one o'clock show, and meaning we need to be here by 12. So as Landon was getting an Uber, he's like, where's Melissa? I'm like, I assume there. He's like, she's sleeping. I'm like, okay, wake her up. And he goes, I'm scared. <laughs> And I'm like, just <laughs> go knock on the door. I was very scared. And he's like texting me back saying she's unresponsive. And I'm like, bro, like maybe there's something wrong. It's, it's, it's 1230. She's not awake. She's not answering to you. I'm, I'm envisioning him like pounding on the door no and her, her just not responding. Mm -hmm. Right. I was like, you better go in there. Like Nigel probably fucking ate her by now. <laughs> I don't want to walk up on that scene. And he's like, I'm not going in. I'm not going in. And he just leaves. So she sleeps through the show. And come to find out later that his version of attempting to wake her up was walking up to the door going, My immediate like, <laughs> My immediate thought about this was she has Rudy in there. If you hit the door, Rudy's gonna go fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine how he no, knocked on it. It was very soft. Listen, man. I 
You are six foot four, 200 pounds. <laughs> I'm 192, thank you. We're losing weight around here. No, I was just, I was scared. And then the next time it happened, I was like, all right, I'm not playing these fucking games anymore. And then I go up to, Matt's like, wake Melissa up. So I like, I storm up the stairs. I just start pounding on the door. I'm like, Melissa, wake up. And she's like, what? <laughs> she just like screams back at me. I'm like, I am not playing this game of, of just like slightly touching the door anymore. We're done. It's over. I mean, I think you're making it a little extreme now the other way. I just walk up and I knock like a normal human. And then Rudy does the rest of the work for yeah. me. Yeah, sure. He just barks like an no, insane I really, thing. I really needed this one, man. I needed yeah, it. I it felt like a win, you know? I get it. Uh, also, shout out to Melissa and her thirst traps. She has been <laughs> mm -hmm. working on the peach. And the BTC. Uh, it seems as though in the before and after, we got a little bit something brewing. Yep. So congratulations to all the deadlifts. All the home gym <laughs> sessions. Really, really proud of your thirst traps evolving, Melissa. We're yeah. we're happy for you at the Only Friends podcast. The garage gym, man. It's yeah. through garage gym is a is a life uh, life changer. I think uh, af it. I think after seeing that, uh, I'm gonna start shaving my legs and getting like four inch uh, inseam shorts. <laughs> you know, like the bros. Yeah. And just start taking quad updates, bro. Like I, I think I could get my quads to something. Of, like, I, I don't think I can actually get my full body to something of a marvel, right? Like, I've just come to grips with the fact I'm not all that You're genetically old, blessed. It has nothing to do with age. Mm. Uh, you can always supplement. Um, I'm just not that genetically blessed. Like, I'm, I'm boxy, right? Like, are I'm you, never going to have that nice, clean taper with a 28-inch waist. Are you, are you built like, like a fridge? I'm not quite fridge level because, you know, I do have the 32-inch waist. So it's like I could really get my lats out to where I can't put my arms down. And that would give me that taper look. Yeah, you... I just, you know, I'm not going to get there, right? Mm -hmm. I just, I know I'm not going to get there. But... What can you get to? What I am confident of is that I have abnormally uh, large arms and legs. And just if I proportional really... proportional to your body? Uh, not necessarily proportional. I, I'm, I'm a stocky guy. Mm -hmm. But they are disproportional to the... To the the growth potential of my other body parts. Yeah, you do have very big arms and like arms, thighs, ar arms, legs, and shoulders. Uh, for me, are very easy to to balloon, if yeah. you will. Yeah, yeah. Traps, back, and chest are very difficult for me to add any girth to. Why is that the case? Genetics. It's literally just a genetic thing. Yeah. It makes sense why you wear uh, well, a shirt like Landon's wearing right now all the time. Mm. It's just. Uh, you know, Access sleeves get in the way of the biceps. They, they really do. <laughs> it seems uncomfortable. Like, that shirt looks uncomfortable on you It's right actually now. not. Uh, the, and honestly, uh, crazy enough, this, sh this shirt is, like, very loose-fitting. Yeah. That's because so of the I mean, material, Brian. I don't know why you don't do the same thing with your, uh, with your pants. <laughs> right, exactly. See, now we're on the same page, right? <laughs> this is, this is cut, off the, yeah. cut off the pants? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like the <laughs> I'm just going to start crushing shorts yeah. everywhere. I'm just going to start cutting them on. I mean, uh, I'm just going to start cutting them on yeah. the out scene to turn them into a partial skirt. at all times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, you know what? My nephew's been on this train for a while, and I might just come around. The four-inch Euro inseam <laughs> is for me, man. Like, it might just be. It might, it might now, be man. the thing. I'm going to get these quads fucking popping. Yeah. Well, I was talk it's funny because I was talking with Dalton about this when I was back, uh, when I was back home in Florida. And uh, we went to the gym. And he told me that like, he, shaved, he shaves his arms. And I was like, oh, that, I kind of like that. Like, I kind of like, because now when like, I look at my arms, like, you can see veins on the other side of your arm where you couldn't before. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of in. I'm kind of into like, and I, I hate hair. I just, I just hate. I just hate hair. But like I'm kind of into like the shaved arms, maybe shaved legs when I get my my calves back, you know? That, yeah, you. Okay, you, you don't need to do that, man. Don't do it. That's for no, swimmers. because look, it's for swimmers. You're not a swimmer. I no could part swim. Of, no, uh, no part don't of you is built swim. like a swimmer. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I could swim. Is your are your legs or uh, torso? Which one's longer? I don't know. What's your inseam? You have a short inseam, if legs, I recall. Right? I don't know, right? Because my inseam is different now because. No, uh, no, no. That's your waist. Your inseam is the length of your pants. Your length. Oh, I have no idea. Wow, that's incredible. We'll have to, you are did you so far from Did you know what your inseam was when you were 23 years old? Yeah, of course. You, I, didn't. You didn't I don't know what mine is now. You don't pants shop? I mean, not often. I got to get new <laughs> pants. Well, we, we did go shopping before, but that was when I weighed 50 pounds more. The weight has nothing to do with your inseam. <laughs> sure. But I, we didn't even talk about the inseam because we just had to get pants that looked nice. I, I, yeah, I don't know for sure. For me personally, like... Uh, most people are disproportional one way or the other. Either your legs are longer than your torso or your torso is longer than your legs. Longer legs are more common. 
Um, so like swimmers specifically tend to have a longer torso mm. and shorter legs. I, I think that's right. I'm quoting it from... Um, but your torso can be longer than your legs? That seems... My torso is like one, like the golden ratio or whatever. It's like significantly longer. <laughs> the golden uh, ratio. So, the golden so here, here to, to give you an idea, uh, myself and Dan O'Brien are the exact same inseam. We're both 30 inch inseam. Uh, I'm six foot. He claims to be... 5'10". <laughs> I, I think he's more what, like 5'8". What counts as your torso from your like shoulders to your hip? Uh, yeah, from your waist to your, your, waist to your neck. To your like, neck? Yeah. There's yeah. Like, no way Dan is like 5'10". Here, like here down is like torso? Does your neck count? I, that's a good question because I do have an extra an, three inches. I have an abnormally long neck. Like I, I have that Matt Ryan neck. Do you? Yeah, because I have underdeveloped traps. Hmm. Right? So like I have like nothing here in the in the trap area, hmm. which makes my neck you long You would think I would have the long neck being the the I, don't, I don't think. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. So, but he did, but he did well, that. I'm not thought. Merton Hanks out here. I mean, I know that's a dated <laughs> reference Hanks. for you guys, but you remember Merton oh, Hanks with Chicken Dance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little he had shout the out. Best, shout the out to the '90s Niners there. Um, I didn't. I, I didn't think you had like an overtly long neck until you did that. Yeah, I. I, <laughs> I have. You know, proportion to my body, my neck and torso are longer than my legs. Like yeah. I've, I've stubby legs, but I've like you know very you dense stubby legs. fingers. My fingers represent my uh, stockiness. Yeah, I'm stocky. I'm yeah. a stocky guy. I have long man. fingers. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Fingers. Anyway, the whole point is like a 30 inch inseam when you're six foot tall is very abnormal. Uh huh. Um, I, I think 32 to 33 is probably more common. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm not a long leg kind of guy. Yeah. And that was what I was getting at with you. Like, mm. I, I don't know your ratios, but if your legs are shorter, which I suspect they are since you've stolen some of my pants, uh -huh. uh, uh, you, you don't want to go the shave leg route. Mm. Like, you know, it's, it's Those not Those might be the high waters he was wearing. <laughs> yeah, they were. Well, they were, but he's also four inches taller than me. So it's like, they weren't that far off base. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm somewhere in between. Uh, I'm like mezzo endo. So this is an ectomorph, a mesomorph, and uh, an endomorph. And there are in-betweens. So there's ecto-meso and meso-endo. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm somewhere between meso-endo. I'm so just the guy in the middle. I don't know. That's mm -hmm. mesomorph. That's like the pure athlete's yeah, warrior just, yeah. body. That's... Yeah. <laughs> That's because you're not. Mr. You don't do anything. Mr. I can do no wrong. Yeah, but like he's yeah. not. He he's, he's not that though. He's he's like ecto mezzo. No way. He's guy. very like you're very very small. You're a small man. No way. Wow. Yes, you, see you are. Is the shirt off? He is very tiny, you and packing on weight would not be easy for him. Like he couldn't just get up to two ten of muscle. You no, show him no a picture way. of your brother. Oh, wait, no, Connor disagreed. Like, he disagreed. He just uh, Your brother's still like ecto mezzo too. Like he's still. He's lean. He's very lean, but like he doesn't have a ton of mass on him. Like yeah. football linebackers are ecto or uh, mesomorph. Yeah, some. So it's impossible to get there. <clears throat> well, it's, be. it's not like a it's get your, there type it's of your thing. Body it's type. just what you are. Because yeah. like you could still obviously be any of the body types and look aesthetically Correct. great. It's yeah. just a matter of like to what extent you look great. Yeah, it's just like when you're at ten percent, are you gonna look like a strong man? Are you gonna look like uh, a, a marathon runner? Are you going to look like a professional athlete? Like th yeah. th those are kind of like the three qualifiers. I feel like yeah. I'm the. F if I was like ten percent, I would look just like very slender. You're probably like ecto mezzo. Yeah. Kind of like Conrad. Yeah. You know, like, I don't less, feel like I would have much, less the like, uh, god strength. genetics where you can literally wake up, smoke a bowl, and get lean. Yeah, this man just eats fruity pebbles. I'm here in the gym every day. And they just, yeah. We look the same. Oh, this guy just eats fruity pebbles and Pepsi and looks and like we don't look the beef. same. First of all, if yeah, I have actually, a six pack. I, I, I take that back. Uh, you might be because you don't have the narrow waistline. Like Conrad just has a very natural tapered look to him. You mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. Mm. So I think I, I think I made that nice comment because off. you're so fucking skinny right now. Uh, I actually think you're probably much closer to my body type than Conrad's. I'm getting strong though. Look at strong this. man look at you accidentally flex. look at that look at that little flex get in there Ooh. show it off baby Getting that's that's yeah. that's yeah. Look at hard work I wanna get, it's been honestly it's been like less than a year since going to the gym and like i just have you to thank for it because i remember i'd use the garage and i could just like do dumb shit in the garage and you'd be like stop using the garage go to the trainer I'm like okay i'll do that at some point he goes i'm serious stop going to the garage we'll go and then we go and now it's great and it's been 10 months and you just kind of stick with it you don't don't eat bad food, uh, jump rope a lot, uh, go to the gym at least four, like four times a week and you'll get there, you know? I mean, the big thing is first, I mean, there's a few things. First, it's 
it's knowing that like there is no there. Yeah. There's just always something different than what you were. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that that's really important to commit to because like this kind of goes back to that whole Twitter fiasco that happened last week with Bonomo and all of them mm. where it was like, one group is seeing a transformation video as like shaming another group. Oh yeah. That. And then others are looking at it as like motivation to inspire yourself to do better or whatever. I think the, the real crux of that is if you view it through the lens of finality, where it's I'm X and want to be Y, then yeah, it comes off as very toxic, right? right. Because it implies that Y is greater than X and that anybody who is X is less than, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not, that's not at all what those of us who I think look at that video and applaud are, are kind of saying, it's like, no, it's that process. It's the th 1,095 yeah. days that she committed to right. something. It's mm -hmm. not the end result. Right. It's just like life too. It's like being rich isn't as commendable as building a life that led to wealth. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, I, I think if you take that approach, it really does become a lifelong thing. You know, I, the older I get, it's so crazy because like the younger you are, the more in control you believe you are of every single outcome. You believe that it's within your ability to be to to work hard enough to play professional baseball. You think everything is a meritocracy. Oh, it's yeah. just effort in, uh, product out, right? But the older I get, the real the more I realize that like most of my control is relegated to like very simplistic metrics. Very of, small things. Of I can control what I put into my body, yeah. I can control how much effort I put into my relationships, mm -hmm. and I can control how yeah. diligent and how much I, I attempt to just show up every single day. Which is still a lot, mind you. It is, like, it is. Like they're very, mm -hmm. they're very complex processes or processes that I'm boiling down to these three sticking points. Yeah. But really that's kind of it. Yeah. Like I don't even really have that much control over my mind, right? I can feed it more information and more knowledge. But beyond that, like, we don't know all that much. And tomorrow I could just wake up uh, in, a, in a, you know, worse state of mind and, you know, anything can be a trigger. It's really hard to avoid, uh, you know, falling down those pitfalls. All you can do is hope to prop yourself up through good processes that yeah. allow you to pick yourself up whenever shit happens. Mm -hmm. So like, I think with regards to like your transformation that, that you went through, um, the real reason why I was telling you, like, go to the trainer is not because I didn't think you were working hard yeah. and not because I didn't think that you would get there on your own. Right. It's because it's so inefficient. Right. There's a more efficient way to do it. And so silly to start from the place of, I know what I'm doing. Right. Right. Which I didn't even think I knew what I was doing anyways. It was more just, I'm I'll too lazy. Out. Yeah. I'll figure it out. I'm too lazy to do this thing. Yeah. And that's why I took real issue with the whole, I, or the whole notion of like, uh, this culture, marketing and selling fitness and nutrition is all trash. Uh, everybody fails. Uh, you're just relegated to the body that, that you were born with and whatever happens out of that happens. It's like, yeah. that's all fucking bullshit. This is yeah. an industry just like anything else. This is a science just like anything else. And those who are more knowledgeable can impart a lot of their wisdom onto you. And if it costs you some money, it's the best money you'll ever spend. Right. You would never become a computer programmer and not go the way of spending a small amount to get information, yeah. whether it's through a textbook or through instruction or a coach mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. So like, there's very little in this world that you would pursue and not uh, happily take the, the, the guidance of an expert from. Mm -hmm. It's insane to think that we're just born with understanding how we're supposed to treat our bodies. Yeah. Like you know, additionally, like, when it comes to the whole like goal oriented thinking, I remember just like getting in a Uber back from the gym to the house and I was asked by the guy that was driving, like, uh, yeah, do you have any, any sort of goals or things that you want to accomplish, like, while, like, exercising and stuff? And I just kind of think about it, and I'm like, honestly, no. I just want to keep doing the same process I'm doing now and maintain that for as long as I can. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really see an end goal of, like, I want to get to this weight, I want to get to this thing, and then I'll be happy. It's like, if I go to the gym today and I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll feel happy. Yeah. If I do what I want to do and I eat the way I want to eat, I'll feel great. And that's mm -hmm. sort of the goal, yeah, not man. as much as this number that I need to achieve for my own personal satisfaction. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been training for 25 years and I've been playing sports for 30 plus. Yeah. And it's like, damn, you're old. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't ever look at any one individual workout or any one individual game or even any cluster of them, like over a year's time or whatever. 
and think to myself like, ah, oh, that's where I made it. It's like you, you just don't care. You just keep sticking to it. And the only times that I look back with any remorse or regret is like, oh, that's that period where I got lazy. Mm. And like, this was the downside to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, that's probably enough preaching when it comes to all of this nonsense, but uh, it, it is worth noting that we are kind of, I don't want to say fucked in the way that we're wired because I don't think it comes from a wiring issue. I think it comes from external influence. Like mm. I think society as a whole uh, imparts a lot of expectation that is goal centric. Right. Like you have, you work towards X and then X is your, your prize. If you're not married by a certain age, you, you kind of failed. If you mm. don't have a career by a certain age, you kind of failed. If you're not making a certain salary, then you know, you're, you're not in the upper echelon. Right. If, you know, all these tangible things seem to be the way that we measure success. And right. I think that the, re the proper reframe is actually like, what does the day in day out grind look like to you? Yeah. And are you happy with that? Because yeah. you know, to, to your point, it's like, I'm never satisfied with the person that I see in the mirror but I'm proud of the, the reflection every single day. Yeah, exactly. Cause, and that's the way I'm sort of slowly getting to, like, I guess sort of transforming from what I felt and like aesthetically looked like before for my own personal reasons to now is I just feel a lot different about myself and I like that. And at the same time, when you, I look at myself, there's always things I can find that be, have an issue with or a problem but at the same time, that's not really the right approach. And what I am happy with is the progress that I've made up to that point and will continue to make moving forward. So what you're really saying is the girls are paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what, what, all you're really saying is yeah. I woke up one day and some biddies were kind of like, hey, you got a haircut. I did. And you're like, I did get a haircut. And I did like, get a haircut. You've been in the gym. I have you're like, I have been in the gym. Sure. Like... What are you up to this weekend? You want to get dinner? You're like, I do eat dinner. I, 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 definitely, eat, I definitely eat dinner. I definitely I eat too many dinners. I would love to eat what you don't clean off your plate. Yeah, I don't waste romance. Food. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't waste food. I, I can't stand it. I can't stand when like, it's like, oh, like, no, you can just take it. It's like, no, we're getting a, we're getting a box and I'm going to eat it later because I cannot, I cannot stand wasted food. And that's end scene. <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. You heard it here first, ladies. This is Las Vegas' most eligible bachelor. I don't know about all that. Young Landon Tice. I don't know about all that. He will be rocking the cutoff to a formal dinner near you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't wear the cutoff. Get in popping. This is gym attire. You gotta go to the gym after. This is gym attire. Speaking of popping, uh, you guys lost your mind a little bit here in Vegas this weekend, huh? A little rain comes through. That shit Jeez. is wild. Everybody just a little rain loses their fucking minds. Well, I mean, I don't that, know that's what, what happens. Was going wow. on, man. That a little flooding crazy. on the strip. Yep. I see. It's uh, nice. They put in a, a new lazy river. How disgusting is that fucking lazy. water? <laughs> Where did this guy find a raft? Is I what I want to know. He's yeah. just like the pool. Pool party. Oh, yeah. yeah. So this is the link, for what it's worth. Um, just flooded. Yeah. I guess Lake Mead's up. <laughs> There's that. <laughs> like he's literally on a ride. <laughs> there might be new dead bodies washing the shore that weren't previously buried there. Uh, based, based off of this surfing the flood. Pretty wild. I mean, we've talked about this before. There's just like no drainage in Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember there being storms in my years living out here. I don't really remember too much of... Flash floods were always a thing, but more so not this year. I think it the rainfall we got has already been like double the average mm -hmm. and we in the monsoon season we still have like a month to go yeah right so it's like it's it's just it's just been poor it's just crazy how like every day it it might rain which is very unique for vegas yeah do you know much about the underground culture here of tunnel people um i a little bit i knew that there's like i know there was like um a lot of deaths that happened with these floods because of, of yeah. the people that were like the, the homeless people that were living. So there's like a whole under, culture of, yeah, of homeless people who take to, um, <clears throat> to these wash tunnels mm -hmm. and they basically create lives there. Yeah. And uh, annually, whenever monsoon season comes about, there's always a few deaths uh, because it just happens so quickly, right? It's, it's equivalent of like being at Red Rock 
mid hike mm -hmm. and just getting dumped on and then getting you know washed out by a flood uh which does tend to happen obviously less often but it happens sometimes um but i think like to your point uh this year in particular with how torrential the downpours have been like this isn't really predictable you know right so uh, i don't know I, I watched one documentary on this many years ago and i don't remember a lot of the details but they were interviewing people who like make homes uh within these tunnels and i remember them saying that you know they have like a community-wide warning system where uh as information gets passed either by the skies turning dark or you know they they, they catch word that it's raining elsewhere they do protect themselves. They try to get the shit out of the, the tunnels and, and take for cover. Um, but like when these flood, like I imagine that happened rather quickly. It had to have, right? Yeah, of course. Like that was, had to be like two, three hours. Mm -hmm. Right. Max. So, uh, you know, when that happens, uh, especially like, it's not like when they're in these tunnels, they're, they're paying attention to the outside world. Like you just saw a, a clip <laughs> there. Like they're pretty out. deep into these right. things. And you know? Once it's there, it's too late. Right, yeah. right. So, yeah, like, once water starts coming in, mm -hmm. it's not like you just make a mad dash out of the tunnel. No. Like, you're racing the flood at that point. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know uh, to, to the degree of seriousness it is or even if it's something that the city gives a shit about. I hope they do. I mean, it's sad, right? It's just, like, these people, they don't have anything. Now they have to, like, worry about... It feels like that they could set up, like, an early detection system of some sort that wouldn't be that difficult to automate. Sort of like a... You know how you get those National Weather Service things on your phone? Mm -hmm. Just set a speaker up outside of something. the tunnels yeah. that just like send a mass just alert, give them a 15-minute yeah. warning, something along those lines. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, too, because it's like they're not doing... If anything, they're doing the city a favor by living in the tunnels, right? They're out of sight, out of mind, which the city is... Uh, they're, they're happy about. Like It's not like Tent Row in North Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, for anybody who's never been there, there's probably a one mile stretch uh, around uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard, I think, or uh, somewhere in that, that North Las Vegas area. And it's just tents. Yeah. Just wall to wall tents uh, of homeless people. Um, and, you know, it, to me, it's fine. Seems reasonable. Like if that's just going to be a thing, you know, allocate that space for them, figure out a way to make it more, uh, habitable, I guess. Um, but I imagine for the people who are residents up there, it's probably pretty brutal. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, it's big decline on your neighborhood. Uh, I can't imagine that like it helps for resale purposes and, and things of that nature. And you know, North or I don't want to say North Las Vegas as a whole because there are two separate sections to North Las Vegas. There's like Centennial Hills, which is you know super plush and everything else. But then there's Old Vegas. Um, just outside Fremont, where it's a little bit more run down. Uh, you know, that Zappos project came through five years ago uh, or so, where they were kind of remaking everything. The art district kind of had a pump. Um, but then Tony, the owner of Zappos, died unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. He was young, man. Yeah. He was like 38. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, I was just reading a book where they were talking about that. It's going to escape me. Wanting was the name of the book. Um, and there was like a whole section dedicated to uh, Zappos and the culture that they created and everything else. Like pretty remarkable what he had done as a founder and like what his mission was. Very tragic for uh, not just the company, but the, the city itself. Like he was very heavily invested in, like, he had an investment in Las Vegas the way like Elon Musk has his investment in space travel. Right. Like that was his no, mission. Yeah. Right. You know? He just wanted to make it the city so much better and um tackle the homeless problem and yeah things like that. yeah and there was a big facelift that that took place uh a little gentrification of of old vegas but it doesn't seem like the prog uh the the project ever like really came fully to fruition i think that's what spurned the life is beautiful uh festival originally um i think that zappos was a partner in launching that and yeah. that's why it, it was hosted in old vegas have you ever seen the arts district have you ever went down yeah. there like mm -hmm. Or yeah. like lunch or something yeah. it's it's so crazy it's like this super like plush posh area where a block over is just like complete desolate it is destitute. so dope i drove past it one day and i was like what in the fuck is this it was just like such a cool area mm -hmm. and i was just a part of vegas i never knew about there's some cool bars there um 
the the one that Danielle always likes to Velveteen go to. Velveteen Rabbit. Is it the Velveteen Rabbit? I think so. Isn't that in the Cosmo? Yeah, it is. That's a, that's, it's that's it's white. A it's easy. The one you're thinking of is the same one I'm thinking of. It's like white rabbit lie or something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Velveteen Rabbit. I think I think Velveteen's in Cosmo. <laughs> I think Conrad's right. <clears throat> um. Um. But, but anyway, yeah. yeah, there are a couple of cool bars there, and there's this weird section where there's two breweries that right. that Thank are. <laughs> what's the one? What's the one you're thinking of in Cosmo? There's another one with rabbit. It's like yeah. white rabbit lie or something like that. Um, there's, there's a part of the arts district where there are two brewery, <laughs> brewing houses that are 30 feet apart. Yeah. I don't get it. I, I don't understand. Well, there's like a whole section down there with different breweries. and. No, there's just literally two. Really? And they're like right across the street adjacent from one another. Oh. And to my knowledge, outside of Yard House, they're the only two breweries in like pretty much all of Vegas. No, there's a bunch of breweries. Are there? Yeah. Where yeah, there's there's one there's one in um in Tivoli Village, there's one uh, What's there's the one a whole in... sec there's like a there's a strip where there's like four or five of them and then then uh, you go out towards Henderson and you have uh, Love Lady is that what it's called out there there's a few different other ones yeah hmm. no, Rose, a... Rose Rabbit Lie yeah that's there what I was thinking of. that's the one in Cosmo yeah okay so I had it backwards um yeah and then there's another uh there's another bar there that has like a bunch of it's very weird. The theme is like, it's almost like a uh, uh, yard sale. Like you walk in. A yard sale? <laughs> yeah. Like you walk in and everything in the bar is for sale. Uh, they're like, like flea market? Sort of, yeah. They're like books, records, board games, tons and tons and tons of board games. Um, it's kind of cool. Sounds, yeah, I was going to say, it kind of sounds fun. It's kind of cool. Everything's like from the 90s-ish era. Um, before my time, man. Very strange, though. Very, very strange. 99. <laughs> You're a 90s baby. 99, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, like, for my time, you know, most stuff from the 90s isn't going to be from uh, 99. Sure. <laughs> um, all right, let's get into a little bit of poker. Uh, Rampage went to middle of nowhere, North Carolina. I think Cherokee. He went to Cherokee, yeah. Cherokee, North Carolina. What was going on there that so many Circuit. pros were traveling? Circuit. Since when did so many like big name pros travel okay, for a circuit? So it's I'll a explain, really I'll good explain. stop. I'll explain. So after Florida, the next stop that always happens is Cherokee. And it's kind of like on the way up. On whatever. the way up to what? Just on the way. You just go back if you're going back home. There's if you're people, going up to the northeast people, yeah, and then people if you're staying on the east coast, you can go there and then play Tampa next week. Yeah. There's just always Florida and then Cherokee. Yeah, it's but I saw like... I saw pros that wouldn't grind a... Uh, a circuit stop at that stop. Yeah, like Adita. it's just a bigger. It's just a like bigger what? circuit stop. Um, Pratu, what's his name? Adita Prat, Pratus. Prat, hold on, I'm saying it way wrong. You shout out PLP. <laughs> huh? Not you shout out PLP. PLP is not playing for who's PLP. Pratush. Pratush. Oh no 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 no! Hold on, I gotta get this guy's name right. <laughs> Oh man. Anyways, Cherokee's just a big circuit stop. It's the main always gets really big. I mean, there are big circuit stops everywhere, man. I don't know if like bigger buying pros. May, I mean, honestly, close. maybe I'm it's just, just like <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'm also just like misrep. And uh, you're jaded. No, no, no. Well, Cherokee used to be the host of the national championship whenever they did that free roll every year. What national championship? The one that they do during the series now where if you have a bracelet or ring. Oh, you mean the tournament of champions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it used to be they just kept a point system. Okay. And if you were in the top 100, you could buy in. Mm -hmm. And if you won a ring, you got free rolled in. Ah. Cash um, games are also pretty good there. Yeah, right like you don't, the cash games are good everywhere. It's mostly just the tournament stuff. And it's close. People just go. They go. They have fun. I didn't go because I don't like... You don't like fun? fun. No. <laughs> I like fun, but I like... I like being here. You, you know what? I like being here, having more fun with you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So anyway, uh, apparently it was like an hour and a half Uber ride from the airport to the casino. Yeah. And Rampage made the mistake of telling his Uber driver that he played for a living. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so. <laughs> oh, man, it's so tough. It's like someone asks you, hey, so what are you here for? And you just have to be like, I Business, man. Business. Poker. No, and then it's like, not. oh, do you? I play poker too. Look at that. And here we are now. So right. his post says, took an hour and a half lift ride from Asheville to Cherokee for WSOPC. 
Uh, the Uber driver says how he's always played on WSOP free play, built up to 1 billion chips, and loves the game, but never in person for real money. Well, today I'm buying him in for his first time at a 1 3 table. Oh, man. It sounds so wholesome. It does. It sounds like such a story, right? Yeah, it starts mm -hmm. off so well. So basically, $300, he's going to put him in. Update on William. <laughs> After I go play my tourney, I never saw him sit down at the 1 3 table. Maybe he is self scammed. LOL, but at least he deserved the tip for driving so far for me. Oh, man. <laughs> this is like a story in two parts, but instead of the story in two parts being like a good story in two parts, it's just a sad story yeah, in two it's parts. Yeah, like the guy just wins a bracelet next year. Yeah. Because I, I saw some people in like his comment section, uh, just from Twitter, kind of being like, he didn't have to put the money in play, this, that, whatever. And I just think that's fundamentally incorrect in this in instance. Because. If someone says, hey, I'm going to give you money for this thing, and then you do this thing, and then whatever happens, happens, sure, right? Yeah. Fine. But if you give someone 300, like, if you give some money under the interpretation that they're going to use it for a purpose, and then they keep it, that's different, right? Because mm -hmm. Ethan wouldn't have given him money for 1-3 if he was just going to say, oh, I'm just going to pocket it and not play. Ethan was under the impression that maybe he might get some content out of it. He might have a talk, like an update, like, oh, hey, how's it going? Do you have any interesting hands? And maybe there's something there, like, that works both ways. Like, right. wholesome, he gets to play poker for money, um, and Ethan gets to do this really nice deed and maybe make some content out of it. But that gets completely taken away when you give someone money for it and they just take it. Yeah. I don't like that very much. I don't like it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, whatever. Like, yeah, of course. Three hundred dollars is probably a fuck ton of money to this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And gambling with no no ability, probably not the best choice. Yeah, it just feels it just feels kind of down bad, you know. Yeah, it's a little down bad. It's a little down bad. Like I get it, but it feels it feels it doesn't it doesn't feel right in, mm. in my heart, you know. I do agree with you there. Yeah. I do agree with you there. But anyway, shout out to William for scamming <laughs> <laughs> rampage. Uh, the young man had it coming. And uh, this won't be the first game. It won't be the last. And it won't be the last. No. Shout out to Rampage for having his heart in the right place. Yeah, uh, I love Ethan, and, man. Ethan's know, the best. <laughs> lighting 300 on fire. Um, the, the whole, he deserved that. Stop it. He drove you 90 minutes. You gave him a $300 tip. Yeah. Just, just stop it. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can, Ethan, Ethan, I love you. You can copium it however you want. He, got, he, got you, he, got, he had you in the first half, you know. You'll be back. <laughs> We'll yeah. be back. There's not a lot. There's not really a lot to say here. No. Imagine he picks him up for to bring him back. <laughs> that, would be, <laughs> that would be hilarious. He's oh, like, how'd that one three game go? Yeah. <laughs> Scout, come here. Oh, no. uh, you want to come back? Maybe the guy sat down, come doubled on. up the first hand, and just took off. That'd be dope, actually. <laughs> oh. Definitely hit and run if you're that guy. Yeah. You got to do that. Um, tonight, Max Payne Monday has a pretty interesting lineup. We got our man, the champ in the house. Espen playing a little bit of 1020 on stream. The yep, rest yeah. of the lineup is going to be filled out with DGAF poker per usual. Sashimi up in there, causing all kinds of fucking trouble. <laughs> <laughs> out here starting the shits with, with Melissa. Getting in some Twitter beef. DQ's in town. My man, Israeli Ron, is there. Margo's there as well, uh, per usual. And then... The one and only Adam Twenty Two, wow, up He's in, in the there. mix. In the oh, let's mix. go, dude. He's in the mix. Let's. He go, might dude. be the second most polished player at that table. <laughs> Adam Adam plays a good bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. mostly tournaments, a lot of less cash, but yeah, he's in there. Uh, Sashimi put on her Instagram story that, and I don't think she. Th this is where I actually do believe that she doesn't uh, understand English all that well. She said that she would, she would, if anybody wanted to take over on her VPIP being twenty five percent. She would bet it at one to one. I thought it was twenty eight percent. She said. I think twenty five. But as in, she wants to bet that her VPIP will be higher than twenty eight percent. Correct. So if anybody wants would, to under, if anybody wants the under, she would offer one to one. If uh, anybody wants the under on forty percent, she was that. offering ten to one. Yeah. Bit of a language barrier. Here, I, think. <laughs> I think she wants ten to one yeah. on the forty percent. Yeah. Uh, but that was not how the story read. I'll take the one to one, man. It'll be under. It'll be under twenty. Yeah, of course it'll be under twenty five. Just shoot, I'm saying, there's there's action to be found. It's free there's money. action to receive. It's free money. Yeah. She's done the impossible. She's an affable knit. Affable knit. She she's an she's a giga knit in a super soft lineup that is super splashy and everybody loves her for it. Mm. That's the impossible, man. Isn't that kind of what what like Phil's kind of shit? Yeah. Yeah, that's well, Hellmuth. But affable, me, maybe being the wrong he's word. He's not affable. He's right. a he's a hateable nit. 
But you love to yeah. hate him. Yeah, you love to hate but you him. You want to play with someone, him. Someone, you got to love to hate some people, you know? Yeah. yeah. The difference is he stinks, and mm. I think she's competent. Mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you're asking me who's, who, I'm, who I'm firing my money behind okay. in a 10 20 no limit game when I know both of their V pips will be sub 20, sashimi all fucking day. Wow. All fucking day. Mm hmm. You know what she's not going to do? Play 30 big blind stacks. Yeah, that's true. She's not going to be in a gigasoft lineup and be sitting with one-tenth of a buy-in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was some real down bad this material. This guy stinks, man. But, you know, <laughs> this that, that fucking guy ago. stinks. Was, How do I not get a crack at this guy? I know. I sold my fucking house to play this guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. You literally yeah. sold your house for this. I, I heard that, I heard that Honestly, was down bad listen, and was backing out. Listen, listen, listen. It's probably a good thing that you didn't get a crack. Why? Well, you don't want me to be rich? I just think you'd fire the whole 800 yourself. <laughs> I would <laughs> have like, got I'm, it. Yeah, look at him. I'm never going to be in this good a spot. So why don't I just fire I would have to have a thing. talk with myself. You know right? what you, you know A what lot do? of people would have to have a talk with you. Right, I got you. He'll look at himself in the mirror and be yep. like this. He'll be like, look. This is a black swan event. Yes. <laughs> I need to make the most black of this event. event. If, I, yes. if this event succeeds, I will then receive a windfall yeah. of $800,000. Right. right. <laughs> if I lose, I still have 200000 to build it back up. I can do that. You like, want to know why? You rationalize it all the way down to I'm firing it You want to know all. why I wouldn't take all of myself? Because I would need people on the hook for the future matches that I would be a dog in. Because uh, what would happen is, yeah. after I beat Stinky Man, <laughs> then I have to play a $1.6 million match versus fucking Jason Kuhn. <laughs> and I'm, I'm now the Stinky Man. Yeah. And I need investors right. on the hook for that. Yeah, and I, I'm going to probably have like some sort of piece in this mm -hmm. one. And yeah. No, it'd be, it would honestly be great, man. It'd be great if you... How do we get someone that we know to be a part of something like this? Well, we know Jason. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, I mean, he's in it. Like, Jason's yeah. studying, doing all this stuff. Like, he does he, a lot of he's, heads up. He's a huge favorite. He's a yeah. massive favorite. We're going to see the reign of Phil come to an end. I, you, you heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> I think Jason will be in the... He's going to play the biggest high-stake heads-up matches that will... But I Set think Pokemon is going to run into a problem, right? Because, like, when the next match is 1.6 million... Who's going to want to play Jason? Yeah, who the fuck wants to play Coon for that much money? That makes sense. Right? Set, like, Set the line for Coon yeah. versus Almius. Uh, I think Kuhn is like minus 135. Yeah. How does it end? Does, does it ever end? You win three matches, you're out. So if Helmuth wins, but you he's have out. to play, right? You have to play the next Apparently game? it's oh. must play, yeah. Yeah. Which also, for what it's worth, I, I did kind of let my Twitter fingers get the best of me. I didn't know. I had no idea what the structure was moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew that there was an opportunity to play Helmuth for 800K. And yeah, I was like, for, fucking like, put me in, coach. Yeah. yeah. But like the reality is... If I then had to play a $1.6 million match and then a $3.2 mm -hmm. million match if I won that one, and they're going to be against like world-class heads-up players, I don't really want to play anymore, man. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. Who's the list that's okay. going to sign up to play Coon? I mean, there's a short list, there's I'm short sure. List. It's going to be like Jungle Man, uh, Makita, maybe. Like, you're just going to see world-class play uh. once he beats Helmuth. Mm -hmm. uh, from that point forward, you're not going to see. What if he loses? But if he like, loses, Helmuth well, has the ability if, to rematch. And he's Helmuth obviously not going to take it. Yo, just, if he loses, Twitter's going to lose their yeah. fucking mind when that next one goes Bro, out. Honestly, I don't want to you know, if Helmuth it just cools him off. If, if Helmuth wins, it can happen. Well, they'd have to play three times, right? I mean, unless Helmuth wants. To yeah, play. that's 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 oh, the reality. So, oh no 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 no. That's Helmuth the other wins, problem. Stop. That's the other problem. If he beats Jason, he he can just be done. Oh, because that's his third. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. So it's it's the worst case scenario where it's. Like, Kuhn is probably a 60-40 favorite, oh but, like, God. he just loses 40% yeah, of the time, yeah. and then that, that's, that's it. You're right. fucking out. Sometimes yep. you just get over prepared to set, and it's over, and we yeah. just have to be like, oh, my God, the rain of for how continues. Yeah. Well, it doesn't <sighs> if he quits, and then Kuhn's sitting there for or the next match. Well, he would just say, no, Kuhn I mean, is not there the for the next match. Yeah. He has to win to stay in the gauntlet. So if, all right, if he so loses, then, he's done. So then two new people come to the Two gauntlet. new people will come in for 100K. Oh, resets. Oh, start to resets. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. That's hmm. smart. Hmm. Maybe that's your opportunity. Get in at 100K. I don't think Helmuth can quit and then come back in. No, you. No, I don't want to play good players. <laughs> I'm not good at heads up. Well, I'm the fish. Well, it's, open, it's back open to oh, everyone. I will, I, I will say this. It's though. 100K and it's open I will say this. Yeah. If they start me at the 100K yeah. and they give me the fucking matches that they gave Phil the whole way through, I'm in. There you go. I'm in. Right. I, I don't think I would have been a dog in any of the matches that Phil played. Yeah. Maybe, uh, no, no, I don't think I would be a dog no. in any of those matches. <laughs> I was trying to give 
some benefit of the doubt, but no, like he got fucking softballs from 100k all the way up to 800. Mm -hmm. and but now he's got to play coon. Yeah, now he's dead. I like the way you're talking right now. I like this energy. I'm, I mean, I like we're being lot. real, man. We're I like being it a lot. real. Listen, like, man, I, well, I, I don't think I'm a huge favorite. Like, I'm a flip versus Daniel, probably. But, like, you know, I, I can I like, hold my like own. It. Yeah, you like. I like. Listen, all I'm saying is he's I like. He's a fucking geezer, man. You know, I'm, I'm young geezer. and sharp. <laughs> geezer. I like, I just, I like this energy. This is good. Okay, well, well this is I'm rejuvenated from Tennessee, baby. Yeah, you're back, dude. We hiked up the Smoky Mountains. You want to know what's at the top of the Smoky Mountains? A bear. Nothing. No, fog. <laughs> bear. Smoke. Fog. Fucking smoke. Fog. Fucking smoke. A lot of fog. So much fog. I you really, can't see. I really wanted yeah. it to be a bear, man. <laughs> I really wanted you guys to get there. There's oh, like this man. bear just guarding. It's like, congratulations, you've made it. It was. Then you, <laughs> if Smoky the Bear Smokey. were at the top of the Smoky Mountains, that yep. would be a dream. Yeah. I will yeah. say that. They should have a. All right, uh, you'd, be, you'd, ask, you'd say, say what up to Scruff McGruff for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know they, know, you know they hang out McGruff, together. Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> it's 0652. Uh, <laughs> you, fuck, you fucking love it, man. I really do. You fucking love it. I mean, uh, Scruff was a big part of my childhood, man. Only okay. you. Can, nope, that wasn't him. That's, that's, that's the that's bear. Smoky. That's yeah, smoky. Only you that's can smoky. prevent forest fires. Yeah. Even I know that one. You know they're boys, though. They are boys. They gotta yeah. be boys. They for all, sure hang out. All the cartoon homies, yeah. they're all boys. Yeah. They're all, all the, friends. Yeah. All the animal all characters. All the animated yeah. homies, Smokey yeah. the Bear, Scruff yep. McGruff, uh, Blue's Clues, you know. They're all, <laughs> they're, they all get dinner Barney. every Friday, yeah. Oh. They all just hang mm -hmm. out. Dora the Explorer yep. is somehow like the cult leader of the yeah. ball. <laughs> Dora yep. Boots out there getting after it. Barney's in there. Barney's in there. <laughs> Big Bird's in there. Yeah. Uh, There's content to be made out of all this. Oh, yes. Yeah. That part I'm sure of. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> what else is new, guys? Uh, what else is new? Oh, there, man. There was some Twitter stuff earlier today. Oh, yeah? Yeah, about oh. something landed in 14 years ago. Oh, my <laughs> God. How did I fucking forget about this? How on earth did I forget about this? Nick Howard has lost his goddamn mind. Yeah, he's off his rocket. He's, lost, he's fucking doing ayahuasca and drinking his piss again. That's obvious. <laughs> what is happening, bro? Someone come get your man. This like, was at like eight thirty this morning. What, what, how is this your morning shit thought? Like, I just see Nick like sitting down to to drop a deuce. He's like, you know what? I really wish I could take a time machine, bang out Landon's mom, and, you, and then just sign Landon to uh, to be my indentured servant on ignition for ten years. <laughs> Like, what? That's what he said? He Basically. said, I'm going to go back in time and bang Landon's mom. I thought somehow he was, like, trying to, <laughs> trying to like, say that he was going to impregnate her Did and he have get... the next, like, generation of... Po no, he just wanted... He, that was just an aside. Like, so while I'm back in time, I'm going to fuck Landon's mom. And then as an aside, I'm going to teach this young man all about the world. Listen, listen, man. Someone I hack his uh, counter. I had a problem with his tweet. Uh, yeah, you did. Uh, you yeah. So, so, so the issue was 14 years ago was nine. It was an eight. Right. Uh, that right. was the issue you yeah. had. <laughs> math. Math. Anybody who's that, that bad be, at math, that I would not trust issue. to be banging my mom. Yeah. <laughs> oh oh my god. So someone said something and then tagged my mom, and then my mom liked the tweet when Nick wrote, <laughs> Nick wrote because she's fire emoji. And I, just, I, just, I just look at my notifications and I see liked by. Is he triple four? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm an adult oh, now, you know. Just, fuck, man. But just why? I don't know. Is this for the engagement? I mean, honestly, yeah, probably. It's a good seek. It's a good seek tweet. Is it? Is it? I mean, does this work? It is fucking great. I mean, it 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 works the same way shock shock comedy works. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, that, that's, all, that's all I got. I laugh for a good 20, 25 minutes. Conrad, you laugh at everything. I laugh. Right. So when something like that comes along, you yeah, lose I laugh for a long time. Yeah. Oh man. I like how you added the uh, the part where he the, the urine drinking, and he goes, "I don't do that anymore." <laughs> Because there's this fucking story of him and his old friend Logan, these idiots, like got lost in the hills of Mount Charleston, high on fucking acid or ayahuasca or some psychedelic and they were just like living Strong in the woods poison? drinking piss for two days because they read an article about it <laughs> what like what are we doing man like anything for an upswing i guess wait, yeah. wait a minute could you survive by like drinking your own urine it's low in toxicity but eventually like you dehydrate okay <clears throat> so you can make it for a while 
th for some amount of time. There Isn't was a there survivor a way that man. You can like. There's a way you can filter it. Filter it or like, yeah, like the, I think I saw Survivor Man. Anyway, Not to get back on that. Yeah. It, was, it, wasn't, it was Bear Grylls. Oh, maybe it was Bear Grylls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. sounds like a Bear Grylls activity. Yeah. It really does. Did you it, do it, was one, it was time? the episode where he climbed inside of a camel. That's right. He found yeah. a camel carcass and mm -hmm. he just, he just, he just, he just idiot? climbed inside yeah. of it. Why? Do you remember he was like shoveling all the shit out yes. with, with his arms? Yeah, it was gross. It was just... Endless amounts of shit inside of this camel carcass. Yeah. Like, like, why was, was he? Intestines. Why did he do that? I don't remember. Stay warm. So yeah, something about the night, like, because he was in the middle of the desert, and like at night it gets like super cold. So he did that. Shelter. Thing. Yeah. In a camel carcass. Yeah. You know, you use why, the, why do why do we do anything that we do? You, you use why what the land gives you. <laughs> did you have water when you got lost in the desert? You know, I was prepared. Yeah. <laughs> As soon as I got the list of people that I was hiking with, I brought things that I would never bring to a hike, Conrad. That's, that's never. That's because I smart. almost had a flint and a fire starter on me. Like I, I brought a book bag that had somewhere in the neighborhood of five gallons of water mm. for a two-hour hike. Tell me how ridiculous that is. Sounds heavy. I had a hoodie. It was 106 <laughs> degrees that day. I had a hoodie in my book bag. I had a towel and a blanket. I had. Uh, one other thing that is slipping my mind. Oh, I had food. I had like enough food to last days. That would I had like 2,000 calories worth of food. That's actually scary. <laughs> Why? I don't want to eat that quickly. I did eat it quickly. <laughs> but I also knew we weren't going to be there more than a night. I'm glad we Animals. survived the, uh, the hike in, in Tennessee. That was not, not easy. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Jace almost died. <laughs> well, Jace is in no condition to do a mile hike Jace uphill. was not having that hike. He was so pissed that we were going, why the fuck are we going on this hike? I wish I could have filmed more of it, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it got to a point where, like, LeMan and I hung back to, to like, co-work him along. Everybody else is, like, a solid 20 minutes ahead of us. And there's probably, the, the whole hike itself was, like, a mile, 1.75 miles. But it was through elevation, so you're going up. But God damn it, was it an easy hike? It wasn't that easy. Literally. Okay, for you, Mister, I you know have never had alcohol, never done anything, never had a bad meal. Well, yeah, but like for someone like me who's been drinking for two days, I I tell you what, I was regretting it. Like soon as we started, I, but once we like got to like close to the top. I was I was happy. I was I was content and I was like, you know what? We did it. I'm happy. I'm <laughs> we, glad. We, there was a whole half a mile to go, buddy. We, I, I we mean, did not get <laughs> anywhere near the fucking I'm just top. saying I'm just saying that like at the time when we <laughs> took that first step, I'm like, sure. why am I here? Why am I doing this? I feel like hell. Yeah. But I then mean, by the time I got to the top, I was like, ah, oh, this is fun. It was very much a moderate hike. Yeah, at it best. wasn't that bad. But so by the time we get like halfway through the hike, it starts torrential downpour and we're lucky enough that we're under a canopy of of like forest so laman and i just stop so we don't get wet yep. we're fucking smart exactly. <laughs> and uh everybody else goes along and then jace and a couple of our other friends who were lagging way behind eventually catch up so now it stops raining the two that were like with jace want to get to the top so they friend off him <laughs> and laman and i off. hang back I love i'm like that. okay no big deal so Jace is fucking done at this point. We're literally at the halfway mark. He's he's just like, leave me here. I'm done. I'm not doing it. It's like, <laughs> leave me here. All right, come yeah. on. Like, <laughs> you're gonna be fine. So I start coercing him, and we would literally walk like 150 yards, and he would stop. He go, no, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> this went on for an hour. Yeah. Like every 150 yeah. yards, he would go, how much further is it? I'm done. Leave me here by the roadside. Like, get me on your way back. And I would just be like. Come on, buddy. It's right around the corner. And we just kept doing this and doing this until finally we're like a half a mile away from the top. And he's just like, no more. And our group starts coming back and we see them. It's like, okay. Yeah. We, we saw someone coming down and we're like, so how, how much further? And they're like, it's, it's, a, it's about a half a mile. And Jace was like, you know, he was probably like 20, 30 feet away from us. He didn't hear us. And Berkey's like, wow, how, how can we spin this to Jace where he can we're like, okay, Jace. Let's see. Ha that's it's it's only it's only twenty five percent more to go. So we tell him <laughs> a, a, a half a mile. He was out. And he uh, wasn't having it. It was it was an experience. It was it was, uh, it was a real eye opening <laughs> trek for me to know that uh, all of that all of that projecting I had, where health and fitness and nutrition is is important to you. 
This it was is, really embodied in Jason that moment. This yeah. is what you train for. This, this is literally what you train for. That and then getting the groceries out of the uh, out of the car. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You you know you mm -hmm. never know when you're going to be called upon to lift heavy things, to walk long distances, or to uh, basically fight or flight a scenario that is life or death. And I got to tell you, if I was a betting man, Jason isn't getting out of any of those scenarios alive. <laughs> right. He dying. He dying. Matter of fact, most of that group is not getting out of right, Like I said, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just but, have to be faster than the slowest person in your group. This is true. <laughs> this is absolutely fundamentally yeah. true. Uh, so we got a big week coming up. We have our academy Ooh, starting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Amazing. Four days. Uh, we have a good group coming in. Nine mm -hmm. individuals who are excited for the Poker Out Loud format. Uh, we do have another one coming up in September. Time is ticking. September 8th to the 11th. We have two seats remaining for that one. You guys are interested at all in attending the Academy and joining us uh, for this in-person experience. Just head over to academy.solveforwide.io. Uh, also today, uh, there's a new episode of On Second Thought live on our training site, Solve for Y TV. You can find that at solveforwide.io if you're interested in seeing more. Um, I'm pumped. I, I always look forward to the academies when they're this close. Like a week out, I'm, I'm always just dreading Same. it. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, there's so much to prep for. Right. But now it's just too late. Like, yep. it's tomorrow. Yeah. Like, what are we going to do? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way too. I kind of get, I'm like, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Make sure all the stuff is in order. And then I'm like, the day, the day before, I'm like, all right, academy time. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be tough doing double duty, running the podcast at night too. Yeah, they're going to be long days. Three, Three long, long days. days. Yeah. I got gym at 8 a.m. Let's go, dude. Prep for the academy at 10 a.m. Run the academy 11 to 7. Prep for the podcast. Run the podcast 8 to 10. Go home. home go to sleep. It sounds, it, like a, uh, it sounds like a WSOP type of week, you know? Almost when, worse. Almost worse because you have to do actually do more stuff instead of like kind of sit and relax. Mindlessly and folding is yeah not right. that yeah, this is this yeah. is worse because you yeah you're yeah because you're actually doing things like and yeah, and you're responsible for other people right, right. you want to make sure everyone else is in you know experience yeah. is as good as it can be but you only have to do it for a couple of days instead of yeah, true. No. a series it's true it's four days of sacrifice really only three because we're not having the podcast on Friday uh, for anybody who might have missed the early portion of this. Um, we're taking Friday off to prep for Monday, which will be our hundredth episode, our centennial, centennial episode. episode. That's right. Uh, Mr. Andre will be joining us again. He'll be back in town. Christian gets back in town either tonight or tomorrow morning for but the he'll academy. Be there. We're gonna have the whole crew. Whole crew. Uh, oh, we're gonna have man. to find a third seat for for Andre. He'll we're probably have be to in have the kitty corner. Seat, yeah. Yeah, we'll stick him in the kitty corner. Stick him with right you guys. in there. It's a nice corner now. Look at it. It is a nice corner. Mm. Um, but I want the show to be special, so uh, I'm trying to figure out. Ways to plan it. I'd like to include some guests if possible. Uh, I'm, hopeful, I'm hoping that this is going to be more of like uh, a robust, complete show compared to the seat of the pants daily show that you're accustomed to. <laughs> so I'm, I'm seeing this as more of like a three hour type show with maybe five minute breaks on the hour uh, to give us a chance to like reset, regroup, uh, and get the run of show together. Can we invite Nick Howard? I mean... <laughs> I'm open to it. Uh, I have I, some questions. I do man. have some questions. <laughs> I'm curious. We all, we I all, definitely do have some questions. We all have some questions. Uh, mm -hmm. I fear that if you're planning for a three-hour show, that means it's going to be a five-hour show. <laughs> well, we'll see. Hey, uh, if, if, I hope if, not. The, if the audience is here for it, we're here for it. I hope not. I'm hoping to have uh, audio issues worked out by then where we can take call-ins uh, for guests as well, but I'm not entirely sure. A lot up in the air. There's a lot yeah, up in the air. I like the live guests. L the the, the call-in guests seems yeah. less. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll see who's in town, who can pop in, who can't. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it could be fun. It will be fun. It will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can come up with like some audience participation stuff. Speaking of guests, shout out to our last week's guest, Brent Hanks, 40th birthday today. He's in the club, right. Burke. Happy yeah. birthday to Happy B. Hanks birthday, 11. Brent. Happy B. birthday, Brent. Happy birthday, Brent. You did Brent. it, sir. Hanksy. You did it, oh, sir. Oh, man. He's, he's a birthday. man. Also, shout out to he's Offsuit Mafia hitting us with uh, a super chat. It said, giving some love from Glum from Gulliver's Travels. Oh, yeah. I'm unfamiliar with Gulliver's Travels. I don't know anything about it. Is that the 
Um, nope, that's not. That's Gilligan's Island. Never mind. <laughs> Figure it out. Oh, man. All I want to do is whistle the theme song now. No, no. Don't do that Don't after. do that. <laughs> we'll, th- we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's going to wrap it for us today. Uh, I am heading to the gym. Yep. Doing on second thought and playing pickleball tonight. That's well, that my sound- intention. Sounds great. I'll probably join you for. No, I won't. I'll be busy. There's going to be a. Le- Ooh, that's mm-hmm. right. It's a lady. Maybe. It's a lady. No, don't do this. <laughs> don't, do this. don't do this. Fire up the hot tub, boys. <laughs> Landon's got a guest. Don't do this. <laughs> uh. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. Uh, please like, subscribe, leave a comment below. Let us know what you'd like to see in the Centennial episode. Maybe there's some things that we could do with you all that's a little bit more interactive. Uh, possibly some giveaways or some games, something along those lines. We're open to suggestions. Hit us up. Let us know in that comment section below. As always, we appreciate you. We will be back 8 p.m. tomorrow. Make sure you set your schedules appropriately. It'll be 8 p.m. for the rest of the week. Jeff Platt will be joining us Wednesday. Really looking forward to that. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in. We'll see you manana. Peace. Peace.